Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Eddie Coughlin. Um, I've been in Keelings about two years now, so I was asked to do this just to go through the journey that we're doing with Enterprise Ireland. So my previous history uh, would have been FMCG. of FMCG for the last oh, 25, 30 years. And uh, I'd have to say coming to Keelings, uh, I thought it was an FMCG, but this is on a whole new level. So you talk about just in time. This is the quintessential just in time is the soft route business. Really, really busy really busy. So Enterprise Ireland have helped us hugely over the last number of years with grants and stuff to get us to where we are today. So I'm just going to take you through, through the journey. So what it is, it's a case study of Keeling. So I'm going to try and keep it as real as I possibly can. And what I don't want it to be is a, is a lecture in Lean. So mm -hmm. it's not going to be that because there's a lot of stuff in Lean that we can't use and there's a lot of stuff that we are using. So there's a number of tools that we are probably using 90% of the time. So look, I'm going to, uh, hopefully I'll take you through that to give a better understanding. So. Background to Keelings, our growth has doubled over the last five years. Really, really busy business. So the piece I work in, it, it's, it's really simple. We pack fruit. In Keelings pack us, we pack fruit. And I look after that piece where we get fruit in, we pack it, and we send it out to stores. Okay, so really simple. So all the issues that the growth over the last five years have brought us is around capacity, space and building, labor turnover and retention. We are a minimum wage employee because we have a huge labor piece, a huge labor piece in the fruit. Yields of the fruit and availability of fruit. So if you take, for example, since Christmas this year, we've had about 70% raspberries available. In GB, it's even worse, and it's down around 50. And in strawberries, it's gone from around 80 to 90% availability. So it's an ongoing issue for us. Uh, we've had to put huge investment in our plant to get our capacity up. We've had the leadership piece because we've grown so fast to get the people to, to drive our improvements and training and our CPU and OE was our measure. So we measure CPUs, our cost per unit, and that's our, our number one measure. So we have a very complex supply chain. So we have our own farm and we also buy worldwide. So we also have our employee requirements fluctuates depending on the delivery of the date incoming, our product is coming in. So we buy from all over the world. So we're buying three, four, five weeks tra transport time to get to us. So we, ha we have to be really spot on at our, we won't meet our customer demands. We have a job type coming in, so we can have product coming in loose, we can have it coming in in punnets, we can have it coming in for direct send. So we need to get all of that right as well. So then we need time to process and pack. We have a volume, fluctuates from day to day. We have same day arrival, so we'd have somebody like BWG who'd be looking, f giving us an order at 10 o'clock in the morning. We'd have to have it out by six that evening. We have Tesco's who give us about 36 hours, so it's really, really tight. So when you talk about just in time, this is really just in time. So previously, I would have been used to working in businesses where you're, you're picking from stock. So you had six months shelf life, you had 12 months shelf life, and you had 18 months shelf life. So you could build ahead. This is, this is a completely different ballgame. If you get six to eight hours ahead, that's the best you can do. Um, so, and if we do not deliver on time, it creates huge issues for our customers because we're going to their DCs, their distribution centers. They've obviously got a group of people there who are picking for their stores. So if we don't hit them on time, they're then going to miss the trucks that are going to their own store. So it's absolutely critical. And also from, from our own, we have no public transport going to Keelings Retail Park in, in, in Swords. So we have no public transport. So everybody has to find their own way there. And actually one of the things we've done is put on our own transport, which has helped greatly. So we're actually looking at doing more of that. So if you look at our suppliers and where they come from, so we have our own farm primarily strawberries, blackberries, raspberries, and apples. And they generally goes from around March to September, October. And, and during that time as well, if, we're not, if our yield is not correct, we have to buy other fruit in as well. So we buy pineapples, we buy melons, so we buy from Spain, we buy from Netherlands, we buy from England, we buy from Costa Rica, Chile, Egypt, <coughs> all over the world. So they're our top 10 suppliers. So you can see when we're buying from there, we have to get that to our pack house in time to go out that same day. So really, really difficult if it gets held up on the ships. If, so you're talking about 20, 21 days generally to get it across from Costa Rica and places like that. So it's, it's, it's key, absolutely key. So if I look before pre-enterprise pre -enterprise excellence came in and we got the grants to do stuff, we, we were very focused on DOTIF, which is delivery on time in full. Uh, we were using OE to drive throughput. So efficiency of our line driving throughput. And I have a slide on that to talk why that was completely wrong for us, and we've completely changed that. 
uh, customer audits, quality, you're hitting operational targets, but generally everything was just day to day as you're coming in and it's the same issues day after day. So if you start to ask our guys, they could probably tell you that morning what our issues were going to be for that day. I suppose the next step for us is, okay, how do you take them out? So the challenges for our business, the fruit availability, again, you've had such bad weather in Spain, such bad weather in Holland, that crops have been absolutely destroyed from February. You had snow in Spain this year in March, which killed a lot of their strawberry crop. So we are completely dependent in March on strawberries coming in from Spain. Uh, our yield, again, our yield on the farm, because we've had such poor weather here, we're now three weeks behind. So all our plans are done with our customers. Uh, to have a yield of strawberries in particular around this time of the year, and we don't have them, so we have to change all our plans. We have to buy strawberries elsewhere. We have to buy it on the open market. It costs us a lot more. So we're about three weeks behind. The added complexity of that is it means we're going to have a flush of strawberries in June because they're all going to come on top of one another, so we have to, we have to look at that as well. The weather, again, transport in and out and getting that timings right. Our customer expectations are increasing all the time, all the time. Uh, we need to be audit ready every day because we have a stream of audits right through the year. Uh, fresh produce business again, it, it, it's just in time. Skew complexity, on any given day we can have 200 changeovers. We have 15 production lines and we can have up to two to 300 changeovers on any given <coughs> day. So really complex. Our cost efficiency and then our labor availability, and I, I know it's not just us, but our labor availability is becoming a big, big problem. We have to look at uh, ways of, of counteracting that. So what we have done, okay, and, and, and there's no rocket science in this. Uh, it, it is particular to the soft fruit or the fresh produce business that I'm, we're trying to tailor make it. So I'd have, I'd have experience from what we've done in Coca-Cola and what I would have done in Brefik and Danone and other businesses, and this is just a, a completely new ball game. So I had to change a lot of my thinking for what we've done here. So look, rather than go through, everyone, I'll just pick out the main bits. And the visual management piece here to highlight our progress was a huge one for us. So we do a plan on a weekly basis, what every line is going to produce, and it seriously wasn't worth the paper it was written on because it just changed every day, absolutely changed every day. So now the visual management piece, we do a plan every day for every two days. The guys put it up on the board, know exactly what they have to do, and the team leaders run that on every line. And it, it's been a huge success for us. We're running a number of lean projects in, in, in tandem at the moment as well, which previously was all about the day-to-day. -day. So you talk about lean projects and people that just look at you with glassy eyes thinking, I don't have time to do that, I'm sorry, I don't so some of the other stuff we've done, and, and one, of the, one of the keys for us as well, we were just spread so thin as a management team, so we've broken down the elephant in, into four different areas. We have, our, um, we have four different fruit areas, so we have grapes, we have what we call soft fruit, we have what we call top fruit, and we have citrus. And each of those areas we put in a production manager, and the production manager is now responsible for those areas. So it's like a business unit in itself, and it's given us a lot more ownership uh, for what we have, and it's also given us the... CI stuff that those guys are now working on all the time. So we've changed the management structure, we've completely zoned the site. We started with the basic 5S, so our next step on the second part of uh, Enterprise Ireland is to do 6S, and it's to really bring that up another step. So we've included safety there. So we are self-insured, so safety from us then is a huge business cost for us as well if we don't get that right. Our new production managers, we've brought in new production lines over the last 18 months with a new layout in our pack house and our, our visual management. So <coughs> visual management boards have been simplified. So really we have seen straight away in the last 12 months our DOT delivery on time increased by 20% and our CPU has decreased by 15%. So one of the reasons our CPU has came down is we would measure, and I'm sure most people here are, are familiar with, with efficiency. So literally if you have 100 bottles going down a line an hour, you get 80, you have an 80% efficiency. What we were doing on, on efficiency is we were, we were measuring our throughput through the line, but the only way we could get throughput through the line was to put more people on the line. So it's really driven by labor. So you have people on the line who are sorting punnets, who are looking at and driving punnets through the line. But what that was doing was increasing our costs, and it was actually the more people we put on the line, the less productivity there was on the line. Because if you have 10 people on the line, it's easy to, to monitor them and how they work. If you have 30 people on the line, very, very difficult. So we weren't getting a return for our book. So there's a tipping point there that we really worked on, said don't put so many people on the line. Let's look at more lines and uh, get, better get better efficiency and better flexibility. And that's really worked, and that has brought our, uh, our CPU down by about 15%. So we have a model now where we're going to use the OE to drive improvements. So we just use our efficiency piece to say, OK, what went wrong today? What was our downtime, downtime and what improvements plans have we got for that? And then if you look at the tools we're using, so 
we're not using all the lean tools. We're using the very simple ones. So we're using a root cause analysis. We're using success. We are using OE to drive improvement. Kaizen we call continuous improvement, and then we're using our changeovers. Obviously, with 200 changeovers a day, guys, a minute of changeover would be a massive, massive difference for us, even if we could save that. So we have current projects we're running, and, and this was really unheard of up till about 12 months ago, to be honest with you. So we, we've got all these running, and all these are being run by the production managers in their area for each particular area. Big one here for us is we've a waste project, the 6S in retail too, which is a new building we've built, or we've put the lines into. Uh, that's the one that's most live, and that's the one that's probably going to make the biggest difference to retail too, and it's just getting the area up to a standard where people are proud of where they work. So we're under no illusions in Keelings. We, we have guys who are on lines packing strawberries, packing bananas. Doing These guys didn't, as children, dream of packing strawberries in Keelings when they were in their middle age. And we know that, so it's to make the environment the best we can for those guys to come in and work. So lean for me, and, and I suppose my experience over 20, 25 years of doing lean, and, and in different guises, if you like. So it's not rocket science. It absolutely isn't. And what we're trying to do is not rocket science. It's, it's quite simple. It's repeating the same things day after day, and it's getting people, it's standardization, it's what Guy spoke about earlier, and it's getting that standard work piece. It's simplifying wherever we, whatever we can be simplified. When I would have started work 25 years ago, if you saw a guy and he wasn't busy, you'd be saying, he's not working hard. And my thinking has completely changed. If you're getting the results and you see a guy and he's actually just doing the one job, that's where you want to get to. You, you, you don't need him to be working his guts off to get the efficiency piece. And it's making it as easy as possible for people to do their work. So I see myself and my team as enablers, and it's very much a, a, a down up where we're trying to help the guys at the front line, the team leaders and the category leaders to do their job. It's not me top down telling them what they need to do. They, they know better than me. They're living it every day, every day. It's simplifies, simplifying and reducing tasks. It's about the engagement and empowering. And it is relentless. It's day by day, and every day is, is, is different. It's the measurement piece, and it's working in an area, and, and I make them proud to work in that area. But it is simple in theory, but it is hard work, and it is day to day, and it is hard work, and it's keeping that momentum and drive going. And that's probably the most difficult part. What we have seen, so the day to day is still critical, because if we don't hit our DOT, and we've, we've, we've a number of different time windows during the day where we have to get product out to distribution centers, if we don't hit that, we, we are in trouble, because somebody else will take our share of the market, and somebody else will get in there, and they'll do it. Um, however, what, what Enterprise Ireland and the training with the team leaders and category leaders and our frontline management on it, it has allowed us time to see the wood for the trees and do a bit better planning so we can plan a bit further out and go a week, go a month out. Uh, we're taking a longer term view, so we know we're going to have issues going forward. We know that labour is a problem. What can we do about that? We know cost-wise we're too high, so we have to take cost out. What can we automate? How can we take labour out? So we're looking at all of that. Uh, people have a better understanding of their targets and what their expectations are on a day-by-day -day basis, and we have more joined up thinking through the partners. So retention, retention we see is one of our biggest issues going forward. So if you look at ongoing challenges uh, and managing the turnover retention in a competitive environment, and we're in a really competitive environment, if we don't get the volume, we don't get our profit, we don't make our margin. So once the volume starts coming down, our margin starts coming down, big time. So our location is certainly an issue. So already we've started putting on buses for our own employees. How can we manage that better and what can we do there? Uh, historically, Lean has seen, and, and, and a number of businesses I've worked in, it's been seen as, a, as an operations tool. And it's getting the rest of the business to buy into that. And particularly a, a business as historically old as Keelings, who are pretty much set in their ways, very much so set in their ways. And it's bringing that new piece of thinking. We need to continue to develop our leaders at every level, and, and we're in such a, an incredibly complex environment, and it, it's, it's to develop that piece, and it's to keep those guys, and we have set up new contracts for our team leaders, for our category leaders, because those guys are absolutely key. If you've high turnover in those areas, you're dead. You're absolutely dead. You cannot manage your business on a day-to-day -day basis. You just cannot, because they're the key guys, and they're the guys who who'll deliver. So we need to continue to improve in a, in a very complex environment. And I would have to say, from a Keelings perspective, this wouldn't have been possible without the support of Enterprise Ireland, Robert, and, and his team, because they have, they have really given us the kick, if you like, 
to, to do what we've done and do the training piece and really look at the big elephant that it was and, and take a longer term view. So you can see with our guys, they're beginning to grow and as they grow, they're taking on more responsibility and ownership. And we wouldn't have got that without the training piece um, with Sylvia and her team in Keeling. So it, it's, it's, been a, it's, it's been an interesting journey and for me to come into that type of environment where I'm coming from a business where you're always picking from stock. It, it's just been, a, uh, it's been a learning experience. When you talk about just in time, this really is the, the number one just in time business I've ever worked in. So, look at that. That's just to share, I suppose, from from Keeling's piece. So, if anyone has any questions, any questions? Uh, just just one thing. I love the new the, the new outlet you have there. The the shop you have to set. It's, it's fantastic. I have to say, up there, okay. Keeling's. Um, since you're only there not a long time as well, um, and the kind of industry you're in as well, and bringing lean in and all this kind of thing, and it's, it's been asked a few times that you need to have highly engaged workforce, etc., mm. blah, 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 blah. Similar to my industry, uh, you know, your guys are packing boxes, my guys are moving boxes, and that's not what they dream to do with yeah. as well. And it's quite, quite, probably quite similar. You have people who are almost lifestyle workers that they go to work, they just want to do, they're not highly engaged as well, yeah. and in some way they're blockers. Um, how do you get around them, the energy sappers, the, you know, those guys, they're the, they're the real hard work. Like, where do you, do you know, go with this? I've worked in businesses, I've worked in, in Coke and in Ulm where people were incredibly well paid, and they're still there. They're in those businesses as well, let me tell you. They're, they're probably louder in those businesses because they just don't want to do anything, even though they're still getting well paid. We have... We've, we've created four new positions, four new production managers, who we pulled from our own internal team. We didn't go outside because they were there. I mean, the gems are there. They were just buried in so much crap day to day that you could, just couldn't see them. No matter what you do, it's an 80-20 rule for me. So you've got, oh, we've got these people in the back of the boat. So you're just going to have to drive ahead without them. So if you can, if you can get the 80% with you, and eventually the 20% at the back of the boat is, you know, hang on here, there's something going here. Just marginalize them. It's, it's all you can do because if you don't do that, you'll end up doing nothing. And what will happen is you'll spend more time with the 20% and the 80% will turn around and say, hey, hang on here, I want to do this and, and they're spending all their time with him. What's, what's the story here? And, and they'll get pissed off. So your good guys will get pissed off. So my philosophy would always be just keep driving ahead with the guys who want to go ahead. And eventually you will hit a wall mm -hmm. where lads, you're either on board or you're not. And, and you, you'll have to make that call. But yeah, it, it is difficult, don't get me wrong, and there'll be days where you want to just tear your hair out and say, how the hell is this going to work, you know? And what have I got myself into? And yeah, it's, it's a frustration of it. it. It's really, it's difficult. Any more questions? Okay. Thank, you. Thank you.